In the previous episode, we talked about optional states to configure card list only when it's open. Today, we will continue the implementation of card list, adding the delete buttons to remove items directly from the card. But before starting, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell to don't miss any new videos. All right, let's start from card cell and add that delete button in the UI. Now let's go to car item domain and add the corresponding delete action. Let's do nothing in the reducer. Now call the action from the button. That's it for this file. Now let's work on card list. Card list view will be okay for now. Let's jump to card list domain instead and add the logic to do something when an item in the list is deleted. Let's work on this case. As you remember from previous episodes, this card item action is in fact one that represents an action produced by any card item cell. And it's really easy to identify what cell produces the action because we got two parameters, ID and the action itself. Let's bring those associated values and create an internal switch for each action coming from card item. What we want to do when we receive a delete car item action? Of course, delete the item. To do that, we need to call state car items and use one of the methods to remove items from the identified array. There are many overloads for remove method. Luckily, we can use one that is really convenient for our case, which is this with ID parameter. We can simply pass the ID provided by the associated value and that's it. We have deleted the item successfully, but you don't have to believe me. Let's run the simulator and see the results. By the way, in order to avoid confusion, I changed the image URLs to make them unique. That will help us to debug the work today. Okay, back to the demo. Look how the delete button is displayed on every cell. We just need to press it and boom, the items are gone. However, if we close the card, we can see that products is still selected. This is creating an inconsistency in the state of the app. The selected items should be reflected in the card list, but if any of them is removed, the add to card button counter should reset to zero. This situation where one part of the code affects another is called side effect. In fact, side effects are a really big problem in software development. Development. For the case of iOS, side effects may appear in form of notifications, network calls, database operations, or like in this case, business logic that mutates the data in some part of the app, but it needs to be propagated in others to keep data consistent. One of the pillars of the composable architecture is to manage side effects efficiently and easily. I recommend to read more about side effects in the TCA repo that I will leave in the description. All right, how can we fix this side effect issue with TCA? Since the problem is located in product list, let's go to product list domain and navigate to card case. In the last episode, we just reacted when action from card is the press close button. We can also get card item case and figure out which product was deleted. For this case, we don't care about the ID. That's only useful for card list domain. But let's skip action. Let's open another switch here and create a case for delete card item. However, we have a problem here because we can't identify which was the product. Nothing is returned from delete car item, but we can change that. Let's go back to car item domain and just add an associated value that will represent the deleted product. We will have to do a fix on car cell too, specifically in the delete button. Let's just send the current product that we already got from car item state. That's it. Now let's go back to product list domain. With this product parameter set, we can now just look through the list of products and identify which product ID corresponds to the one deleted. To do that, let's get the first index matching the ID of the deleted product. Now having the index, we can get the UUID from product list and use that ID to set the count value to zero. Yep. 
just to keep things clear, the ID that we are looking first is the ID from the data provided by the model or the web API. And the product state ID is the UUID that we created for identified array earlier. Okay, let's review if what we did works. We can see already that the bug console is showing a minus sign, meaning that something was removed from the state. And look, now the data is consistent. We have managed this side effect really easy thanks to the composable architecture. That's it for this video. In the next one, we will finally replace the mock data with real API call and create the paid button. If you missed the previous episodes, you will find the playlist in the description too. And remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Ivan Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.